two tropical cyclones visible in this imagery. We've got Hurricane Norma in the bottom left near Baja, California, and Hurricane Tammy in the bottom right. One of those is going to have an effect on weather here in the U.S. Not much to report with the climate indices, the PNA dropping out of positive territory due to the breakdown of a trough in the Aleutians and in Florida. And this is what we're talking about in the Aleutians, trough moving on out, and the heights starting to increase. And in Florida, troughing, which gives way to height rises. And when we get that, the PNA index begins to drop. There's the weather chart for this afternoon, a very nondescript weather pattern across the southwest and central U.S. All of the action is in the northeastern U.S. We've got another Friday-Saturday system chugging through the northeast once again. Winds up to 30 miles an hour in coastal parts of the northeast. And the core of the strongest cold air advection moving through Kentucky into the Appalachians. And they're getting a few cold air advection associated thunderstorms in that area. In the southeastern U.S., a moderate risk from SPC for severe weather in South Carolina and parts of the southeastern U.S. adjacent to that. Dew points are in the 50s there, and we've got modest instability that could allow for a little bit of marginal hail and convective wind risks with warming temperatures today. In the southern plains, Yes, the heat is back. And this is how it looked a little bit earlier this afternoon. Let me show you the current temperatures. We've got 97 at Austin, 91 at DFW, and 94 at San Antonio. Some of that heat extends into Louisiana. 95 right now at Alexandria. And even up there in the Caprock region of Texas, we were seeing 91 degrees at Canadian. And even in, up there in Kansas, a warm day, 92 degrees at Hill City, and 80s all the way into South Dakota. However, some cold air starting to advance out of the Canadian prairies, temperatures down to the 50s and 60s in that area. That front is not going to make too much headway, but it is going to be reinforced gradually over the next week. Heading out west, not much to see. We don't have an atmospheric river to contend with, just kind of a weak occlusion offshore. And then up in Alaska, yeah, that's where some weather is for sure. We have blizzard warnings in effect until Sunday through the North Slope area, the Brooks Range, looking for two to four inches of snow there and winds up to 60 miles an hour. Winter weather advisories back to Barrow, which is Utkiagvik now. They renamed that town, and that extends all the way to Prudhoe Bay, looking for 2 to 4 inches of snow and winds to 35 miles per hour. Also, some winter weather advisories in the districts just north of Fairbanks, and gale warnings returning once again for the Aleutians. In Canada, we've got this slingshot of cold air moving eastward. Temperatures behind that not terribly cold, looking at teens and 20s, but that is a big chunk of cold air advection and definitely having an effect on the weather there. You can see those gusts up above 30 knots. Yeah, I'm seeing about 36 knots right there on the Arctic Ocean and that contrasts very sharply with this mild cloudy air near freezing. That's kind of a weak warm conveyor belt and there is some precip associated with that as well. A quick look at the air masses with the pressure and thickness chart. The red lines indicate thickness, which is kind of like an average temperature in the lowest 5 kilometers. And that marks out a frontal transition zone extending from Washington to the Carolinas. So we're going to expect to find fronts just south of there, running about like that, out to the plains and back into the southern Atlantic system. And if we roll this forward, you can, yeah, look at that hurricane down there. That's going to be grazing Cabo San Lucas tomorrow. And it will have an effect on the weather here in the U.S. next week. But up there to the north, there's a mass of cold air starting to spread south through western Canada. And 
as we go through much of next week, we can see that cold air building. The uh, thickness is down to 510 decameters. And here comes a pretty good wedge of cold air into Montana for Wednesday. So we're going to see some snow in the higher elevations there. And another chunk of cold air from the Pacific also moving in. So this is going to represent a definite change going into the later part of next week. And you can see that by Thursday and Friday, quite a bit of that cold air making it down through the Rockies, through the High Plains, and all the way into Colorado. And a good chance of snow in Wyoming and Colorado for later next week. And then at the very end of the run, that cold air does appear to surge south. However, we do need to be on guard since this is the GFS. And as we get out towards those later hours, they do tend to have a little bit of a cold bias. So I'm not too sure how much of this cold air is going to make it down, but it is driven by this 1032 millibar high. So at the very least, it should affect the north central U.S., the coastal areas of the Gulf of Mexico a little bit more in question. Checking in on Big Rig Steve. He's in Portland, Oregon, heading up from Riverside, California to Tacoma, Washington. And there we see some of that persistent fog and stratus hanging over the area. Base is only a couple thousand feet up. Here's what it looks like on satellite. So Portland is located right in there. And this is the telltale appearance of fog and stratus, very closely following the terrain and extending up into those little valleys along the coastal range and into the Cascades. It's only burning off a little bit. Looks like even by the last frame there, still quite a bit of it hanging on. And the fog does tend to be common in these stagnant weather patterns. You can see very little pressure gradient across the northwestern U.S. And at 700 millibars, 10,000 feet, ridging over the area, which is conducive to a mid-level thermal inversion. So if we pull up a forecast sounding for that area and look at the profile, that's it, inversion, just below 850 millibars, and we've got this trapped Pacific air down below it. Checking out the tropics, Hurricane Tammy, low-end Category 1 storm, is going to affect the Leeward Islands later tonight into tomorrow. It will remain a hurricane throughout the duration of the forecast, and there will be some gradual intensification up to high-end Category 1. More importantly for us in the U.S., Hurricane Norma up to 105 knots. That makes that a mid-Category 3 storm, and that is going to graze Cabo San Lucas sometime tomorrow, and then move out as a tropical storm and make landfall later Sunday, with the moisture plume shearing out over the Sierra Madres. Here we can see the moisture on the precipitable water plots. There it is, south of Baja, California, starting to move inland on Monday, crossing the Rockies and merging up with this other area of tropical air. And Tuesday is really where that's going to come together. Rain breaking out from the Texas Cap Rock to Interstate 35. Don't exactly know for sure where most of that rain's going to be. We can only kind of guesstimate it's going to be somewhere in the Southern Plains. The Weather Prediction Center, they do have a marginal risk for excessive rainfall, basically across this entire area from Abilene, DFW, Columbia, Madison, westward. So let's take a quick look at the forecast. Bands of precipitation in the Piedmont, the eastern U.S. Moving eastward. Not much going on elsewhere, but we do see the frontal boundary. That's going to be near that warm front right there, cold front up to the north, and then linking back into that Pacific system. Then going into tonight, this little Alberta clipper coming south. I'm not sure if that's a true Alberta Clipper. Well, yeah, maybe it is an Alberta Clipper, 10, 20 millibars back behind it. But in Texas, 90s at DFW, Austin, meanwhile cooling in the northern plains as that new cold air mass comes south. Little area of warm air advection in Illinois, so it will be a little bit unsettled there, into Indiana and Ohio. And we can tell that's warm air advection because the thickness lines in red crossing the pressure lines like that 
and those pressure lines are painting out southwesterly flow. So that's bringing warm air out northeast where there's cold air. So replacing that cold air with warm air, that's warm air advection. All right, what else is going on? Yeah, the remnants of Norma coming on shore. And we can see some of those showers spreading across Mexico later Saturday and into Sunday into the Big Bend area. Then for Sunday, a reinforcing shot of cold air into the northeastern U.S., some mixed precipitation and snow around Ottawa northward. And then we go into Monday, the start of the next work week, some more cold air moving down into Montana, oozing southward very slowly. Warm air advection setting up in Minnesota and Iowa. Ridge across the eastern U.S., so some dry air for the start of next week. Meanwhile, that plume of moisture crosses into Texas from the remnants of Norma. And we can make out a cold air mass along the east coast with some upper-level troughing. You can see that troughiness in the thermal field. That's indicating some unsettled weather, cold air advection, and possibly a new Pacific air mass. So things do get stormy in the western U.S. There's a little weather system coming together there in Wyoming. And that's the last frame that we have looking at the weather on Monday evening. So we're back with the lee side troughing in the plains, southerly flow from the Gulf, and a little bit of warm air advection precipitation forming right there, and our polar front lurking up to the north. And yeah, that's the big question, what's going to happen with that later next week. Okay, so we're in between big weather systems. Next week does promise to get busy, so hopefully we'll see you back here for the Monday Supporter Edition, or on Wednesday for everybody else. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.